everybody. Hello. Happy Tuesday. I hope everybody is doing well. Let's see if I can pull my live up here. All right, come on in. Say hello. Let me know that you're here. All right, so I needed to make some tacos for an order. So I thought, why not make them live and we'll do a Taco Tuesday. I've got everything all ready to go. All right, so um, we'll go over a few things that you'll need. Um, you'll need some fake cheese. And I just use that with some baking. I make it with baking clay, um, some red clay, and I just use the Model Magic. It's cheaper. It's easier um, for what I'm using. Um, you'll need some lettuce. And this is a um, thing of lettuce that I get from Hobby Lobby. So you can get that from there. And then you'll need um, some Mod Podge. Or resin. I use both, but today we're going to use Mod Podge because I forgot to turn my heat on the other day and um, my Mod Podge, I mean, my resin is really cold. So I haven't been able to use it. So, um, and then you will need some tacos. And I've already made them, or the shell anyway. So I've already made the shell. So we're going to put it all together so it looks just like a a real little taco. So, all right, I'm going to, let me sprinkle this out. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Where is it? Where am I looking for? Right here. Okay. Very good. Well, if you're on here, please say hello. Let me know that you are here and we're going to get started. We've got, I need to cut some lettuce because I cut it up and leave it in this little cup right here, but I'm definitely going to need some more um, lettuce to be able to do that. And it's um, just need to cut off this part right here. I should be able just to use you. Yep. It just comes right off. And this is like where all like the fresh veggies and all that are, and, and, you know, the fake ones um, in Hobby Lobby. So you can get this. And this is actually really cute to use in wreaths with um, your Easter stuff. It's really cute for that. Oh, I got one already done. So, all right. So we're going to get started. I'm going to bring y'all down. Hopefully I won't touch anything. So let's go ahead and get everything done first that needs to be done. So what I like to do is I take my um, lettuce leaf here. Um, let's see if these scissors are going to do it. Hey, Cece. Let's use these. These might do better. Yep. And I just cut my lettuce into little strips. It seems to be the easiest way to do this. So how's everybody doing? It's awfully quiet around here today. I have three of my dogs at the groomers and one of them is Fletcher. And it is very quiet around here without him running around acting like a crazy dog. I may only need one leaf today. All right, and now I'm gonna go back to the other side. We love Taco Tuesday, but that's not what we're having for dinner tonight. It's cold here, so we are gonna have some soup tonight because it's really cold for some reason. Well, hey, Maddie. All 
I was just thinking about you, wondering how your day was going. All right. All right, so you get it all, and it kind of looks like this. And I found that this is the easiest way to do it, to have, like, little strips. Because you don't want, like, a big glob of lettuce on there. And then I just go down, and I just cut it right off. Alright, and there you go. Now you're just left with that stalk and you can just throw that away. And I'm going to put all of these little pieces in my little cup. It only takes a few pieces really when you do your tacos. So it doesn't take um, that much to be able to do that. And I don't think my comments are working today, guys. Sorry about that. I'm not really sure. All right, so I'm just going to use this Model Magic. Um, it's a little bit kind of drier than the foam clay, and it tends to be a little easier um, to work with, especially when you're doing this. So this is going to be the tomatoes, and so I keep it fairly simple. You know, I don't do anything too fancy with it. Um, I just get, I'm going to get a little piece out, I don't know what that is, in there, and that should be good, and you have to kind of work it, I've had this clay for a while, and I tell you, if you work with foam clay, and then you go to work with model magic clay, what a huge difference it is, I mean, huge, and I'm just going to kind of Work it, warm it up some. Cece, I saw your resin project today. It's beautiful. Did you see, Cece, the resin that's on sale? I checked my Hobby Lobby. My Hobby Lobby doesn't have any. Like, the shelf is completely bare. Completely bare. All right, that should be good. And I'm just gonna roll it right here on this table. Make sure that it's good and clean. None, yeah, I know. We didn't get so lucky, did we? I wish. I'm just gonna, yeah, I don't want it um, too thick. I want it pretty thin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into triangles. And so what I like to do is cut it into like a, um, like a long strip. And then cut off the two ends. And now I'm just going to go through and make triangles. And they don't have to be perfect. Because you know, when well, when I cut my tomatoes, they're not always completely perfect. And be careful because this clay is wet, so they'll all kind of stick to each other. Hey, Julie. How are you, girl? I usually do about three, about three tomatoes on each side. It was cold here this morning, Julie. Well, probably not cold to you, but cold to us. And um, it's finally warming up, though. The sun has come out. It's nice. It's real nice. Right, 
Just kind of go back and forth making those triangles. And like I said, they don't have to be perfect. Because once you get them into your fake sour cream, you hardly, you see just a little smidgen of it. So, well, my order's for resin tail. Yeah. Um, I went, I've been having to order mine because my Hobby Lobby, and at one time my Hobby Lobby and my Michaels, neither one of them had resin which I thought was crazy. So I've been having to order mine, which is fine, but you know, kind of a pain. All right, I'm gonna do a few more just to make sure I have, I have plenty, which I think I will, but I wanna make sure. If you have foam clay, you can certainly use that too. For stuff like this, though, these projects, I just use Model Magic. It's so much cheaper. Oops. There we go. Just make you cut you out some triangles. It's a lot easier if you have them all made beforehand. Then you don't have to worry about it. And then... Get everything ready, and then it's just a matter of assembling your tacos. The Cinco de Mayo, it'll be here before we know it. So a lot of people like to decorate their trays for Cinco de Mayo, their tier trays. So I like to keep tacos ready to go. But these are for an order that I got. All right, this should be plenty. Come on. Whoops. Lately, it's been so hard for me to go live, but I've got just, I've got things just about worked out where I'll be able to get things back to normal, hopefully. All right, Mother's Day. Oh my gosh, Julie, that's a long time. That's a really long time. All right, so we have our lettuce and we have our tomato. We have our cheese, it's already done now. I use a polymer clay for that um, and I usually make a couple of um, packs of the polymer clay so that it's all done. All right, so what I need to do now is cut some styrofoam because I add styrofoam to my tacos so that I don't have to fill so much up with the, um, with the spackle. Let's see. I need it. I'm going to use this to kind of size it up. So probably about right there. And then I make them pretty thin. They don't have to be too... too thick. In fact, that's probably too thick. I'm going to cut it down a little bit more. Just a little, you know, like a little ledge. And then I'm going to put it down in there. And then that way, when I go to put my um, speckle mixture in there, it doesn't have, you know, I don't have to fill up so much space. That can go down just a little bit. Has anybody ever made fake tacos? Snowbirds. I know, wouldn't that be nice? That would be really nice. Oh, I need a glue stick. All 
I know. Could you? I don't know how they do it, but um, a lot of people do. We used to live in Florida a long time ago. And all the snowbirds would come in and it would just be crazy busy. I'm just going to hot glue this right in there. And don't worry, we'll cover up that styrofoam. The snowbirds would come in and it would be crowded and it would be busy. And then, then they all go back home. All right, there's one. Got a new glue gun there so I'm having to get used to this thing I like the precision tip on this glue gun and the one I had I dropped it and it broke off so I had to get me a new one It would be expensive, though, wouldn't it, Julie? Like, you'd have to have a house in Florida as well. And that would be quite pricey. And see, when you do that, when these, like, dry, they, like, close up a little bit. So when you put that piece of styrofoam in there, it really opens them up and it makes life a lot easier. We live in a community, though, a lot of people came from, they were mainly from New York. That's where a lot of people were from. But it would get expensive. I mean, they would have their cars flown in, not flown in, but driven in. And, yeah, it was crazy. Crazy, crazy. All right, let's see. Let's get this one glued in. Hey, Jan Cook. I didn't think I'd see you today. I know you were at the church doing the um, the little dresses. Thank you for sprinkling. Thank you, thank you. Okay, one more. And then we will start assembling and getting that part done. That glue is just a little extra added measure, but once you get all the spackling and stuff on, it usually doesn't go anywhere anyway, but just for added measure. Hey, Tina, how are you? Okay, so we'll let all that settle. Let me get all this out of the way. I can put this back up because I'm done with that. The thing with Model Magic, though, it dries up pretty fast if you don't have it good and sealed. So let me go ahead and get some tape on this thing. I am doing pretty good. It's quiet around my house today. Three of my dogs are at the groomers. And it makes it very quiet around the house. And Fletcher is there. And whenever he's not around, it is very quiet. Because he is something else. Alright. So I have my... Spackle bags. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill it up. And what I do is I'll just use some spackle and some, hey Teresa, some um, brown paint. Nothing too fancy. Fill this up. I don't use a tip, a frosting tip or anything. I just Put it right, right in the bag. Push it down. It really doesn't take very much either, so, which is good. 
You're taking a lunch break. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Now, all I do is, y'all can see this, the tip right there. I just cut off the very um, tip of it. Enough to where the meat, or the spackle will come out. But it won't come out, you know, guns a-blazing. I think I'm going to cut it a little bit more. Just a tap. Okay. So now we're going to assemble. All right. So I've got the styrofoam on both ends. And you definitely want to make sure that you cover that up. And when you're putting the meat on, I kind of do like swirls. And that way, I know it doesn't, it's not meat. But it kind of gives that look of meat. So what I do is I just kind of take my frosting tip. Or not the frosting tip, but the tip of my bag and you see I just kind of swirl it around and you want to make sure you get inside and get on those edges hi Angela how are you so it looks just like this and then that's what the inside looks like so just a little bit and then if you see any spots that are where it shows the styrofoam, just squirt you a little bit more um, meat mixture in there. So, and then I have these little taco holders, and I stick it in there while I am on to the next one. Hey, Miss Rita. All right, let me see. This one probably could be needed to be cut down just a little bit more. Let's see if I can do that. Very good. And I find it's easier if I just hold it in my hand. There we go. The taco shells are made with white foam clay. And then I let them dry and I use a sunflower, sunflower color by Anita's. I'm doing good, Angela. I'm doing real good. And see, that's what it looks like. Looks a little odd now, I know, but once you start putting everything on it, it comes together and looks just like a taco. Miss Rita, how are you doing? How's the weather where you are? I know you were um, having bad weather. Was it last week or the week before? All my weeks kind of run together. Y'all lost power? That was probably like, what, two weeks ago, I guess? And I just get it on, make sure on the sides. You want to make sure that there's nothing showing through so that the... Um, Styrofoam doesn't show through. Just coal. Oh, um, Cece, I got these taco holders at Hobby Lobby. You know, they have in the spring section, like that taco section. That's where I found them. Hey, Jamie. I think they also sell these on Amazon, too. See, see, um, I think at one time I did find them on, on Amazon. They're great. I have some for the house, too. And then I have some for in here. Um, Hobby Lobby had, like, two kinds. And one of the taco holders they have looks like little cactuses. And those are really cute, too. I eat hard tacos. My husband and daughter, they eat soft tacos. So, all right. So, we're going to put that. We're going to let that sit in there. And then I've got, put this up. Now, we're going to do the sour cream. And that's just white spackle. I do the same thing. I just use a frosting bag, put 
put it in there. No frosting tip. You don't need a frosting tip. One more scoop for good measure. Whew, it's getting warm in here. I'm gonna have to take my sweatshirt off. I like to use something and move it down. I tell you, it's gotten to wear, it's hard to push it down. Yes, CC, I do too. They look so, they definitely look really real. All right, I gotta take my sweatshirt off. It's hot in here and I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> Not a good combination of the two. Uh, woo, I tell you, my hot flashes have just started recently and they're, they came in with a vengeance. So I'm just going to cut that off. So that's a little bit bigger hole that you can see. Because, you know, sour cream. If you like sour cream on your tacos, it's usually kind of globbed on there. And so I just go right on top here. And just kind of go in circles. Just like that. And you can have it like coming off the side here if you want so it looks like it's kind of globbing out. Hot flashes are the worst, I know. And when my doctor asks me if I have them, I usually tell him no because he keeps trying to put me on hormone pills and I won't do it, so. They say they lead to breast cancer and I thought, good gosh, I don't want that. All right, so we got the sour cream going. I like to put them back in these stands. That way, they don't get messed with. <laughs> I bet you are, Miss Cece. I bet you are. Well, I had a hysterectomy several years ago. So, um, just a partial. I didn't have a complete hysterectomy. So, I knew it was going to be coming. All right. So now we've got our taco, and now what I like to do is the lettuce that we cut up in the beginning, I go ahead and I lay it on there, and you don't need glue or anything because it'll dry right into the spackle, and I just take it and I just press it down into my spackle. So it looks like, you know, a few pieces are hanging out um, um, on the side. And you can get them going in like different directions. Just like that. And I just use my tweezers and just kind of press them down in there. And sometimes they might be too long. You can just cut them off. Save that little piece, though. You might need it. And then let's see. I usually try to do about three pieces. I'm going to cut this one down. Probably don't need one that long. And just do it like that. All right. So there you go. So now you've got your lettuce. And now what we're going to do is we're going to slide our tomatoes in. And what I cut them in triangles and then I put them on the sides here. You can put them all over if you want. Hey, Holly. Oh, you're watching from Vegas. I love Vegas. Great place. And I just slide them right into the um, sides here. So it looks like some tomatoes. So you got tomatoes. Now you can, if you don't like tomatoes, you can leave that part off if you like. All right, I think I'll put 
One more. Whoops. Come on. Well, keeps falling out of my... Put one or more in there. Sometimes it moves your lettuce, so you just got to kind of put it back in there. I think this side I'm going to add one more. See if I can find a small piece. I think that'll be good. There we go. So now you've got your little pieces of, um, I found my tweezers. I did. Yes, I did. They were, um, so I got a new glue gun and the new glue gun I have has a, like a base on it. It's actually really cute. I like it. Um, it's a sure bonder and I ordered it off of Amazon. It's cordless. Well, the base plugs in, but the glue gun itself is cordless. So, and you've got about two and a half to three minutes of time before you got to put it back on the base. But it's actually just pops right off the base. It's pretty easy. It's not bad at all. I tell you putting the cheese on. The cheese really does make all the difference. All right, let's see. I'm gonna cut this little piece right in half. There we go. Now we're going to add our tomatoes. Yeah, these are super, super cute. All right, Miss Jan, go do your thing. Miss Jan is at the church. She, um, People donate, like, I think they're wedding gowns, and then Miss Jan and a group of ladies cut them and make little dresses for babies that pass away, like, in the hospital, like preemies or babies that are born early or whatever. It's such a good thing. I used to work in labor and delivery, and I can tell you that the, the mothers are so appreciative, you know. Especially if the baby's like 25 weeks or something, you know. Oh, burgers would be great, Jamie. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And this stuff is so easy to cut up. So you won't have any problems um, cutting it. Super easy. Hamburger would be great, though. I make the hamburger macarons, and they they sell really well, especially in the summertime. It's more of a summer-type project, you know, I guess for, like, the summer trays or whatever. All right, let's see. We'll cut this one because you really don't need, like, whole pieces for the whole thing. And you just go through and you can put your lettuce in however you want to. This is kind of like shredded lettuce, you know, that you can get in the bags. Hey, Ann, how are you? All right, let's see. hard to pick up this clay when it's wet. It sure is a lot easier when it dries out, but it's all right. But I like to do three because, you know, I'm a, I'm a odd decorate in odds. All right. They're coming together looking like tacos. One more. 
then we're going to do the cheese. So with the cheese, um, I used to use um, resin, and I don't really do that much anymore. And Miss Cece, I let my I forgot to turn the heat on in here the other night because it was warm all day. And then we apparently were having a cold front come through, and I didn't even think about it. And I forgot to turn my heat on out here in the building. And now my resin is all, um, like, really thick and almost, like, milky looking. So, I hope once, you know, now that the building has heated back up and stuff, it'll get, it'll heat up and be okay. If not, I've ruined a whole brand new thing of resin, which upsets me. I'm usually pretty good about it, especially since I know I have resin out here of keeping it um, warm, especially at night. So I was bombed. Oh, wasn't it fabulous, Ann? I know. It was absolutely... Cece and her resin projects are awesome. And all these little tomatoes and the lettuce and all of that will dry right into the spackle. So when the spackle dries, this will dry with it. That's why I like to make it all at one time. You don't have to worry about gluing or anything. It's done. It all just dries together. And there's no right or wrong way to put these in just before you use it. Oh, okay, Cece. I'll try that. Hopefully that will, um, that will work. All right, I'm going to put another piece of lettuce on here just for added good measure. Hair's falling out. Okay. Now, here is our cheese. And I'm going to mix it with Mod Podge. And, um, oops, sorry, did I miss a question? Yes, the lettuce it, it looks like this, a head of lettuce. These are great if you make wreaths, or you can put the, if you have a really big tear tray, these are really cute for Easter decor. Um, so like I said, I used the polymer clay for my cheese, and I just grate it on a grater, and then you bake it in the oven according to whatever the directions are on your package. There's several different brands, and they all call for something different. So hopefully that will be enough. But today I'm going to use Mod Podge. You can use Mod Podge, or you can use resin, what, whichever one you want. It doesn't. It, they both work the same, and um, Mod Podge will dry clear, so you don't have to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour some on here, and then we're going to mix it up. You want to make sure like all of these pieces get touched so that they'll stick. And this is a lot easier than trying to glue, you know, each piece of cheese down because that would get, you know, that would be difficult. You would be probably driving yourself crazy. And you can see the Mod Podge on there now, but like I said, all of that will dry. It'll dry clear, so you don't have to worry about it. And I don't know if I'll have enough for all of my tacos, but I, I don't like to waste the cheese because polymer clay is expensive. It is quite pricey. Alright, so... I use my popsicle stick to get the cheese on. 
And I see a big piece right here. That was a good one. Just carefully get it on there. Whoops. I'm kind of messy with it. And like I said, it will um, it will all dry together. I drop some pieces. I'm just gonna get those on there. And I like to usually pile it up pretty high. As I not like super high, but I like a lot of cheese on my tacos. In real life, too, I like a lot of cheese. A lot of cheese on my tacos. And this is pretty good. It, because of the Mod Podge, it'll help it stick to each other. You can kind of manipulate them to go however you want to. I have some big pieces here. I'm going to put that there. All right. There we go. Let's see if I can pick it up without dropping any of it. All right. There we go. And so we have our cheese on our taco. You see how super cute that is? It looks just like a real taco. It looks so real. And then you just let that Mod Podge dry, which does not take very long at all. And the whole project usually takes, I usually wait about two days um, and everything will be dry. And then you can ship it to your customer. I do have these available in my Etsy shop. So if you were interested in any of them, they will be... Um, they're in there, but they'll be ready to ship in a couple of days. Plenty of time for Cinco de Mayo. There we go. Sorry, I'm concentrating on the cheese. I get like hyper-focused on it. <laughs> now you're hungry for tacos. And here's that one. They are super cute. I make little mini ones too. I make little teeny tiny ones. It is Taco Tuesday, yes. Um, I make these for drinks. I put those in um, like a taco drink. Oh, I got my podge on me. It is Taco Tuesday. We went to Amish store and bought smoked cheddar cheese. Oh, my husband would be in heaven, Julie. My husband is, loves cheese, any kind of cheese. I don't mind cheese, but he loves it. He's a big cheese person. Let's get... This is why I like using the Mod Podge too, is I can, with resin, you have to wear gloves and it gets really messy, but the Mod Podge, you can touch it with your hands. It's fine. Did you make, I did. So the shell itself is made out of, um, um, white foam clay is what I use. And then I paint it using, um, the shells were already made. So we didn't make those because I already had those made. Um, and then I used a color called Sunflower. It's by Anita's, Anita brand that you get, you know, at Hobby Lobby. And um, then I take like an old paintbrush or not a paintbrush, a toothbrush. And I put brown burnt umber in there and a little bit of water and I kind of splatter the sides because you know how tacos have those brown like splatter spots that's what I do 
And that's how I get the brown on there. I see a dead space right there. There we go. Perfect. All right. There we go. We got another one done. Look how cute. Those are perfect. All right. I think I made a little bit more than I needed to, but maybe not. Maybe it's just enough. Let's see if I can just kind of scrape it on there. Probably made just a little bit more than I needed to, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. For sure. I like to only have to make my batch once. Get off my tweezers. Yeah, these are my tweezers. I lost them the other day. Oh, I was telling you all about my glue gun. So I used to have a glue gun holder that my husband made me. But it took up too much space over here. So I um, cleaned this side up over here next to me. I always felt like it was cluttered. I need a little piece, like right here. All right, perfect. I feel like I had a lot of dead spaces in here, or like space in there. I want to cover that up. Let's see if I can get some little pieces in there. I like it to be covered with cheese. When I get my tacos, I ask for extra cheese. And then I pour that melted cheese all over it. I love it. That's my favorite thing about a Mexican restaurant is that cheese. Love it, love it. I've got a little extra here. Let's see if we can use it somewhere. I can put some right here. No sense wasting it, right? I put that right there. Whoops, get it back in there. All right, let's see. Oh, the rest of it looks good. I only have a few pieces. Um, thank you, Irene. I, um, I grate it and then I bake it. I don't know the color, but hold on. The bag is right over here. Oh, here's the bag. The color is um, made by Primo, and it's called Cadium. Cadium Yellow Hue. It's item number 5572. You probably can't read that, but it's made by Primo. And there's you bake for um, at 275 for 30 minutes. I baked it at 275, but I only did 15 minutes because it's really thin and it's not very much. So, but that's what it's, it's Cadium, C-A-D-M-I-U-M. Um, foam clay, you're not going to be able to, um, and I'm going to bring y'all back up. Foam clay, you wouldn't be able to shred. So, I use a shredder, just like you would if you were shredding real cheese. I got this at, um, I think I got it at the Dollar Tree. And I use this part up here, and I just shred it. Um, but foam clay, you would not be able to. Because foam clay is wet. And it wouldn't shred like that. Even if you let it dry out, it still probably would not work. But the polymer clay does. And then I just bake it in my oven. But um, I'll pick this up so that y'all can see it. But yeah, so there we go. There are tacos. Aren't those super cute? I love them. I like making them. I enjoy them. And I think they're super cute. Super, super cute. So, I just messed that. I touched that one. Time-wise, the polymer clay would be great. Oh, yeah. 
if yeah if you wanted to use foam clay and like you could roll it out but do you see how when you shred it it really does give you that that shredded cheese look that you would normally get um let me see if i can hold a piece up you know like you would get if you were shredding real cheese it just gives it um a more realistic Yes, Cece, I do. I do that. Yes, I do. And I went to go put, I was messing with some clay because um, I got something really cool. So one of my group members sent me a picture of something and I was like, I really like your ice cream scoops. And I make real, I, I'm not real ice cream, but faux real ice cream. Um, and um, but sometimes you want something quick and easy. And so I made some ice cream scoops. Look how cute they are. And, and these, I use these. I think several people have these, but I didn't own any. So I bought some and I thought they were really cute. So these are great for like um, my ice cream waffle bowls and stuff I make. So I was making, using the pink and I was doing it yes the day before yesterday. And last night I was putting all my clay away and realized I did not seal my bag. Urgh. So I caught it just in time. Um, so Kathy, on the taco shell, um, so Jamie, I wait till it dries. So I cut my circles and make my shell and I wait till it completely dries and then I paint them. Um, usually about a day is what it is. And then the brown specks on here, I take this old toothbrush and I mix burnt umber with a little bit of water so it's watery. And I put it on my toothbrush and kind of tap it off. You don't want it like dripping. So you just want it. And then I just run my fingers like this and I get the, the splatter effect on it. So that's how I get that, is by doing it like that. So this is a really, you can see, I've used it several times and it's like stiff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, all right, guys. Well, that is all I have today. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed that. If you make some tacos, please let me know. I would love to be able to see them. Um, thank you. Hey, Margarita. Um. But yeah, so there we go. So Taco Tuesday, we can eat some tacos. Not these, because they're not real. So, all right, guys. Well, y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Y'all have a great rest of your day. And hopefully I'll see y'all real soon. Bye, guys.